Okay, hi everyone. Welcome back to the channel. It's absolutely freezing today. Well, it's freezing by my Australian standards at least. So perfect weather for you know what? Some set theory. So let's get started. I need my hoodie. <laughs> okay, I've got my hoodie on. A little warmer now. So today, uh, what I want to talk about is set identities. So what's that mean? These are special rules which tell us when two sets are equivalent. Now, they're not too complicated, they're pretty easy to remember. So let's go through a few examples and really get the hang of it. So let's get started. So the first set identity rule I want to look at is what's called the commutative rules. So let's have a look at what they are. So A union B is the same set as the one formed by B union A. And similarly, A intersect B is the same thing as B intersect A. So nothing too complicated here, but let's try and figure out why. Why do these equalities hold? Let's have a look. So A union B, what does that mean? It means the set of things X such that X is in A or X is in B. But if we try and define B union A, it's really just the same thing, isn't it? So it's a set of things in the universe such that X is in B or X is in A. But these two statements are just the same. If something is in A or B, then it's also in B or A. If we try and visualize this with a Venn diagram, let's do that. So say we've got one set here, let's call it A. Say we've got another set here and we'll call it B. If we were to try and model A union B, it would be anything in A, so anything in A, or anything in B. So A union B is the total area, the total area of the sets A and B. Now, let's say we were trying to model, if we were trying to model B union A, it would be the total area of B and A. So B, the total area of B and A. So it's exactly the same. B union A is exactly the same as A union B. So let's have a look at intersection. So all we need to do is just change a few things. So we just change the or. So A intersect B and B intersect A are the set of things in the universe such that X is in A and X is in B. X is in B and X is in A. So if we remember our uh, definition of intersection, our definition of intersection was the overlap, right? A intersect B would be the area where the two sets overlap. So it would be this area here. A intersect B would be the area where the two sets overlap. But if we wanted to model B intersect A, it would be the area where B and A overlap, which would just be exactly the same area. So basically what this is telling us is that, uh, is that union and intersection, they're symmetrical operators. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Uh, they're called the associative rules. So basically, if we have three or more sets which are connected by the union operator, so we've got A, union B, union C, the associative rules tell us that it doesn't matter in what order we combine the sets into pairs. For example, we could unionize A and B and then unionize the result with C. Alternatively, we could have unionized B and C and then unionize that result with A. So you can basically think of it as this sort of piggy in the middle here, B, can associate with either A or C first and the remaining one second. Um, and the same is the same is true with intersection. So if we have three or more sets all joined by the intersect operator, so it doesn't matter where you put the brackets. Say we have three sets now. So now we have three sets. We have A, we have, they're different sizes, that's okay. P and C. Okay, so let's try and have a look at why this is. So let's say we calculate the union of A, B and C using this order of operations here. So first we get the union of A and B. So the total area, the total area of A and B. So that's that there. 
and then we take the union of that so these sort of orange area the union of that with c so the total area of this sort of figure eight type pattern here with c and we end up with the total area of a b and c but say we did it in the reverse order so we did it as b union c and then unionize with a so we got the total area of b and c like so and then we take the union of that with a we end up with the uh with the total area of a and b and c so it doesn't matter of what order of operations you use when you've got three or more sets connected by the union operator now let's look at the same the same pattern but with the intersect operator so let's take the intersection of the three sets but using this order of operations so a intersect b so remember the intersection is the overlapping area so that's the intersection of a and b and then we want the intersection of that area the intersection of that shape with c so it's the intersection of this shape and c so where does this shape overlap with c it is just this triangular area here so just that area here so that would be the intersection of all three sets let's do it with this ordering b intersect c is this area here so that's where b and c intersect where they overlap where that overlaps with a is just this little triangular area here so we've ended up with the same result a intersect B intersect C, it doesn't matter in what order of operations you use here. Okay, let's look at the next one. Next set of rules are the distributive rules. So distributive rules, um, they are how intersect and union interact with each other when we've got three sets connected by the union and the intersect operator. So let's look at the first one. So A intersect, A intersected with the union of B and C is the same thing as a intersect b union a intersect c and then the second part of the rule is exactly the same but just all the union and intersect operators have flipped so a union b intersect c is exactly the same as a union b intersect a union c now there's a very obvious connection here with arithmetic so x times y plus z equals x times y plus x times c so this is the distributive rule in the arithmetic space uh, defined by multiplication and addition this is exactly the same principle so the thing on the outside of the brackets it combines with both of the things on the inside of the brackets so we take this x times sort of expression and we add it to both things on the inside of the brackets so it's just the same thing here, right? So we take the, the A intersect expression and we combine it with both things on the inside of the brackets. So those are the distributive rules. So let's try and see why this is. So let's draw our, our three set Venn diagram again. Let's B, ooh, B, that's C. Okay, let's have a look at this expression here. So B union C is the total area of B and C, so here. The total area of B and C. So if we were to intersect this with A, we would just get, we would just get this sky blue region, right? So it would just be this area here. So this is the, the overlap, the intersection of A with B union C, with the total area of B and C. Okay, so let's try it with the other direction. So, so A intersect B is that area there. And then we want the total area of A intersect C. So A intersect C, I'll do it in yellow. A intersect C is this area here, right? So this is where A and C overlap. So the union, the union of those two areas is this kind of butterfly shape here. So it turns out we end up with the same shape. Okay, B intersect C. So that would be B intersect C is that area there. Union A. So that would be the total area of this sort of eyelid shape here with A. So that is this expression here. Okay, so we've sort of ended up with this kind of lollipop shape, right? So A union B intersect C. Let's try it from the other direction. So now we want to do this side. A union B is the total area of B and A, and then A, and then we want to intersect that with A union C. 
So let's work out what A union C is first. So A union C is the total area of A and C. So this, this orangey shape here. Now we want to get the intersection, the intersection of those two shapes. So it won't include this region because this region was only in A union B. And it won't include this region either because that region was only in A union C. So the intersection, we want all the regions that are in both of these sets. So again, we've ended up with this kind of lollipop shape here. We ended up with the same shape as the one on the left. So it's showing that these two expressions are equivalent. So let's look at the next one. The next one is called the identity rules. The identity rules. So these are cases where we combine a set A with something and we get A on the other side of the equal sign. Again, there's a parallel with arithmetic. If we add zero to X, we get X. Or if we multiply X by one, we also get X. So those are the identity rules in arithmetic. Set theory, we have these identity rules. So A union, the empty set. So if you unionize A and the empty set, the total area of A and the empty set, you just get A again. And likewise, if you intersect A with the universe, so U, the set of all things, the intersection of A and U is just A. Okay, so let's have a look at at why this would be. So say we've got a set here, we call it A. Now we want the union of A and the empty set. So the union of A and the empty set, well, it will include all the area in A, right? And it will include everything in the empty set. Now we know by the definition of the empty set, the empty set doesn't contain anything. Nothing is inside the empty set. So if you are in the union of A and the empty set, it means you're just in A. If we were to write A union empty set, if we were to spell out what it means, it would be the set of things in the universe such that X is in A or X is in the empty set. Now, the X is in the empty set, nothing, nothing, nothing can satisfy that, right? Because the empty set is empty. There's no X inside of it. So we can just get rid of that. So A union empty set is the set of things in the universe X such that X is in A. So it's just ending up with the circle A. Okay, let's have a look at the second one. So A intersect the universe equals A. So now we need the universe in here. So let's say this pink rectangle, this is the universe. A intersect universe would be the area where A and the universe overlap. So the only region where A and the universe overlap is in A. That's the only region where both A and the universe overlap. So think of the definition of A intersect universe. So it would be the set of things that are in A and, and intersect means and, the set of things that are in A and in the universe. So A intersect universe will be the set of things that are in A and in the universe. Well, everything is in the universe. A intersect universe equals the set of things in the universe such that X is in A and X is in the universe. Okay, so X is in the universe. Remember that the universe is the set of everything. So this is always true. So we can just actually get rid of that because it's not doing anything. We're just saying, and this thing that's always true. So what we're left with is A intersect universe is the set of things X such that X is in A. Those are the identity rules. Okay, the next one I want to look at are the complement rules. So these are rules involving the complement operator. Okay, so we remember what the complement operator is. The complement of A is anything that's outside of A. So what's this rule saying? It's saying A union, the complement of A is the universe. So let's have a, let's have a look at why that would be. So A union A complement equals the set of things in the universe such that X is in A, so that's that part there, or that's the intersection, the union, sorry, or X is not, is not in A. So X is not in A, that's that part there. Okay, so X is in A or X is not in A. Well, this exhausts all the possibilities for X. So X is either going to be an A or it's not going to be an A. 
So this statement is always, always true because X is either an A or it's not an A. Basically, if you have a if you have a trivially true statement, so a statement that's always true, a tautology um, on the right side of this such that bracket, all we're saying is X is in U and then just some true statement. So for example, something like something like one plus one equals two, right? And re remember uh, this, this notation, it means we test everything that could fit in this variable and everything we test, we check whether this statement is true or not. And if it is true, it is a member of the set. Now, one plus one equals two, that's always true. So everything will be in the set. So the same principle just applies here. Everything will be in the set because this statement is always true. Um, let's have a little look at the Venn diagram explanation. Here is our universe. So we'll call it U. And then here is our set A. So everything inside the set will be A and everything outside the set will be A's complement. So if we were to take the union, if we were to take the union of the two sets, it would be the total area of A, the total area of A and the complement of A, the area outside the circle. So we'll end up with the universe. Okay, let's look at the next one. So A intersected with its complement is the empty set. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So A intersect A's complement is the set of things in the universe such that X is in A and, because we're doing intersection, X is not in A. Okay, well, having a look at this condition on entry into the set, it's impossible for any X to meet this condition because you are either in A or you are not in A. It's not possible to be in both A and not A at the same time. It's not possible for some item X to be simultaneously in A and not in A. Okay, so this statement here is always false. It's always false. When we're trying to calculate what's inside this set here of A intersected with its complement, right? Now this condition is impossible to meet. It's impossible for anything to take the position of X here and create a true statement. So when you've got a condition which is impossible to meet, you've got the empty set, right? Okay, the last rule, the last rule I wanna look at today is the double complement rule. Uh, so what does that mean exactly? It means the complement of the complement of A is A. So if we apply the complement operator to A twice, we just end up with A. Okay, so let's have a look at why this would be. So the complement of A is the set of things such that X is not in A. So the complement of the complement of A is the set of things such that X is not in the set of things. Okay, X is not in the set of Y such that Y is not in A. Okay, so let's look at what the Venn diagram would look like. So here is our universe. This is our universe. And here is A. So this is A. And then the area outside A will be A's complement. So this region here. So the set of things that are not in A will be the region outside of A. Okay, but we want A's complement's complement. So that will be the set of things, the set of things that are not in A's complement. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at what A's complement is. So it's this region here, right? So what would be the set of things, the set of things that are not in A's complement, the set of things that are not in the complement of A? Well, that would be just A, right? The only possible region a thing could be in, if it's not in the complement of A, is in A. There's only two possibilities. Either you're in A or you're in the complement of A. So if you're not in the complement of A, you must be an A. So for that reason, the complement of the complement of A is A. Okay, that's about it for me. Uh, thank you for watching. I am going to try to get warm, maybe drink a hot chocolate and listen to some true crime podcasts as it's the kind of thing I want to do on a cold rainy day. So please remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, 
help support the channel, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.